And by the way, Johnny Gill, I don't understand why you're so mad at Stacey Lattice off for. He think it's about her being so light and him being so dark. No, Johnny Gill. He was walking around D.C. in a trench coat, a three-piece suit, a jury curl, and a briefcase at the 15. He was weird. <laughs> Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment respectfully. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's move on to our next book. I decided to move forward in time to the 90s. This is I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity. You Are Not Your Past by SWV's Leanne Lely Lyons. There was something about the instrumentation in the songs that I loved, especially the horns, ooh, me too. Ooh, my God, it is something about a trumpet player or a sax player. But there was always one queen that I enjoyed that I continue to listen to till this day. And that's Miss Millie Jackson. Mommy would secretly play this record because of its risque content. I wasn't sure what the contents were saying, but I sure know that she was loud, bold, and a, and a good cusser. Millie Jackson's daughter sings back up for Erica Badu. I don't know if she sings back up for her now, but I know she used to. I was a little kid at the time and had no business listening to those records, but they were funky, soulful, and full of shiz talking comedy. It was the first time I heard someone say F U C K in a song, and it sounded so good to me. Miss Millie was Lil Kim before Lil Kim was Lil Kim. Word. I realized I could sing at about six or seven years old. I would be in school singing so much that I got in so much trouble for it. I knew then that just because I wanted to hear me, it didn't mean everyone else felt the same way. In a weird kind of way, that's how I felt damn near my whole career in the music business. Whenever one of my favorite singers came on the radio, especially Stephanie Mills, I would try so hard to sing like her, but couldn't. Stephanie had one of the most recognizable voices in the business then and now. And she had this vibrato that only someone with that special throat could do. It was so fast and controlled and I loved every minute of it. I could not understand how someone so little can have so much power in their voice. From sweet sensation to never knew love like this before to one of my favorite vocal performances by her to date. I feel good. This song was one of my favorites but came out at a time when my dad left his family for another woman. He and his new lady friend danced to this song at our family reunion while my mom sat in that room and watched with so much class. I hate that now. I must associate one of my favorite songs with a bittersweet time in my life. But it was at that moment I realized the gift of song. Denise Williams was also one of the artists that I loved growing up as a kid. In fact, on my 11th Birthday, with my birthday money, all I wanted was the black butterfly 
45 single from the record store and to see the movie Purple Rain on the Jesus. See, I was a different kind of kid. While all the kids my age was racing to the store to buy candy or waiting to hear the Mr. Softy ice cream truck, I was buying records with my money. Well, I ain't never really had to do that because my mama always kept pretty good music in the house. It wasn't until my very first concert ever that I realized what I wanted to do one day. My father surprised me and my sister Jeanette with tickets to see a young singer that I would cry about. And her name was Stacy Lattisall. She was from DC. Let me tell you how DC treated her. When they saw that red bone, wait a minute, pause. The fact that she was light skinned did not help her at all. The fact that her family were middle class over there on the south side. I mean, they weren't uptown. You know, Stacy, I love your girl, but you wasn't uptown. You was over there on the south side, over there with the Johnny Gill while he was gilling. And by the way, Johnny Gill, I don't understand why you so mad at Stacy Lattice off for. He think it's about her being so light and him being so dark. No, Johnny Gill, I loved you, but you was weird. He was walking around D.C. in a trench coat a three-piece suit, a jury curl, and a briefcase at fucking 15. He was weird. Girl, don't have nothing to do with your color because them red bone women love them dark-skinned men. Plus, her husband is like a darker brown. So ain't got shit to do with your color, girl. It was because you was weird, Johnny DeGill. Now, pause now. Pause. Piggity, pause. Don't think. That Johnny Gill is not responsible for some dirty old man getting the draws. Because that album with My 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 on it also had Feel So Much Better on it. And I can think of a dirty old man that drove a diesel Benz back in the late 80s, early 90s. That got the vagina just because of that song. In addition to paying for all my books that semester in college. So I'm not knocking Johnny Gill's skills. It's just the fact that he just can't let that weird little boy in the jury curl with a three-piece suit on, a trench coat, a London Fog trench coat, and a briefcase go. It's okay, Johnny Gill. You can let that little boy go. It's okay. If Stacey Lattisaw didn't want to marry you, it's okay. Shit, you best friends with Eddie DeMurphy. That, I mean, God damn, what more out of life do you want, Johnny DeGill? DC, when, I love my city, I do. But baby, when I say them mother hunchies can be crabs in a burrow, they are the opposite of what Atlanta is. Pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you, Blink. That girl couldn't even be comfortable in her own city. Atlanta, y'all are different. Y'all thinking, okay, we need to generate the next big thing. Tell you, DC, I love my city, but they be lunching sometimes, man. Stacy was one of the youngest successful artists out at that time with the biggest voice I ever heard come from a little girl. Word. Watching her perform was such a treat. But on stage, she came across really shy, almost looking like she didn't want to be there. It was true. Miracles, Love on a Two-Way Street, and the fun song, Attack of the Name Game. Attack, hey, of the name game. You better lock up your daughter. So let me also say this about Stacey Lattisaw. Not only was she light-skinned, but she really and truly had white features. From what I understand, both of her parents are black. She kinda had the look of like a Christy McNichol and a Tatum O'Neill. She had a song out at the time called Miracles, Love on a Two-Way Street, and the fun song, Attack of the Name Game. You couldn't tell me shit when I sang these songs. I just loved Stacy and would have loved to see her more in concerts. A song wasn't just a song to me. It was three or four minutes of someone's life experience 
Good, bad, or ugly? Facts, girl. Facts. Coming home from shooting our first music video right here was so exciting and tiring at the same time. Now, this is where I believe she is reflecting on the fact that she's making this music. She's popular, but she's still being dropped off at the apartment that she shared with five people. Remember, she's living with her godmother, Jet. You're about to be seen across the world. But you driving up to your apartment, just like the new edition. That's why I believe uh, they love each other or they love to work with each other because they have the same song, you know, or the same life story. You know, people seeing you all over the world, but you still getting dropped off in the projects. Okay, we didn't work you to death. All right, you didn't, you know, shook your ass and you got some free vagina on the way. I guess that's also, okay, pause. Let me say this. I really do believe that some of these managers and executives, I really do believe that they believe that part of the payment was the girls. Look, you travel in the world. You are a... Uh, a celebrity now you can have all the women you want i believe that that's what the executives told them okay we're paying you in fame right now you don't get no money you get fame you might get the money later but as of right now just enjoy these girls throwing their underwears on stage to you whether you want the underwears or not i mean it's there and i would equate that with the Vietnam veterans being given heroin. Okay, I know you I know you know we got you over here fighting this white man's war, but here goes some juggy to keep you happy. You're welcome. Coming home from shooting our first music video right here was so exciting and tiring at the same time. My family still didn't have a place of our own and were still staying at my godmother's one bedroom apartment in the Bronx. I was exhausted with the scene changes, getting makeup done and just the beating that came with being up for 14 hours straight with no rest. I couldn't believe there was a possibility that my life could change in just a few months. I remember being dropped off in front of my building around 3 a.m. in the morning, and of course, the block was hot. It was midsummer, and everyone was congregated in front of the building. Here I am getting out my Lincoln Town Car with full glam and an overnight bag with a few of the clothes we were able to keep from the video shoot. As usual, I'd walk up towards my neighborhood to say, what's up? And here goes my friend Chance. Why you got all that makeup on? Ooh. Why you got all that makeup on? Pause. Number one, because we didn't wear all that shit. Every time I have a conversation with somebody that grew up in the 80s, they would be like, thank you, Jesus. We don't have the pressures that these young kids do now. If I had to put on all that fucking makeup every day, I wouldn't make it. I, I don't even, uh. You got all that makeup on, I smiled and said, I just did a video. A video for what, he said. For my song with my singing group? Of course, he thought it was funny as hell. Everyone on the block knew I could sing because they'd always asked me to sing. The first time I heard our first song on the radio, we were in Los Angeles about to begin the first leg of our promo tour for our debut album, It's About Time. We were in the limo on our way to the hotel and we damn near went bananas. That's us. That's us. That's us! We were screaming all over the place with excitement. I think the driver closed the partition because we were so loud. Although I never felt like one, I thought being a so-called celebrity and being a part of a successful brand would be the end of my problems. At least that's what I was told. But in fact, this was the period where I was the unhappiest. I made a left on MLK. Oh, what a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. Taking a ride on the south side. Made a left on MLK.
Two. 